this video, we're going to look at how to uh, edit and create forms, how to place them on a page, and then how to check results. So here's an example of a form page that's already all built out. And if we go to fill out, we'll see what I'm talking about when I say form really is the form itself. That form can then be placed on any uh, type of content um, on the website. So I would go ahead and edit this form um, by going to forms. And in this case, I want this form. And I'm going to go ahead and click edit. So I could check entries or do a variety of other things from here. So it's just a drag and drop interface. Um, and then I can very easily get into the settings of any given field. So for example, um, if I wanted to get into the settings for the email address, all I do is click down. And pretty much with every field, I'm always going to see the option for general settings, um, how does it look, and then some advanced features. Um, and I will have, of course, some different settings based on the type of field it is. For example, um, well, I'll probably always see, you know, what's the field label? Do I do want a description with it? Such as, you know, please provide your address. Um, and whether or not uh, it's required. Um, other things will change, such as um, email confirmation. So on email form, on an email field, I can have the option to have to confirm. So in other words, type it twice and make sure they match, which is a personal favorite. Um, and then I generally, under appearance, um, have the option to kind of choose, you know, is this going to be on the top or the left of the field? Uh, um, and do I want placeholder text? If uh, somebody types in something like without an at sign or something, is there a custom error message I want them to get? Um, how big do I want the field? And then there's always some advanced stuff too. So you'll, as you'll start using fields, um, you'll kind of get a feel for uh, what all these options are. If I want to add a field, all I do is just go over here till I find the one that I'm looking for and just drag it where I want it to be. So if I uh, wanted to add a question about uh, favorite choices of ice cream, I just drag this multi-select over here and then say, you know, favorite ice cream. Please select your favorite flavors. And then I can have, you know, vanilla and chocolate and, stra and strawberry. And then, of course, for this kind of thing, I can say, I can say whether something's required. Um, and if I go into appearance, I can make some other choices here. Um, I kind of like the way all those are. Um, and I can make, let's say I want chocolate to go uh, down here. I can change the order. So then once I've got that all, you know, right, then um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save. Once you use the form builder, you'll get um, kind of used to all the things that you can do with these various uh, field types. Um, so now let's go ahead and go back to the page that we were at um, in order to kind of see that form. Like I said, we can place the form anywhere. So what we want is to, uh, once we fix it, we want to be able to go to the actual page where it is in order to see it. And there's my ice cream question. So 
because of the type of thing that I picked. That's how it looks. So if I decide I don't like how this looks, I can go back and I can make some different choices here. So if I look at this and say, I don't really like the multi-select field. That is not what I wanted. Um, I could do, you know, check boxes instead. And I could get rid of that. And go here. And favorite flavors. Decided I'll change the name. And maybe the, really I want to ask about cherry and blueberry. And of course, chocolate. That's the best. Spelling it right is even better. And then I have a choice, enable select all. And then we'll just check that out. Go back here, I'm just going to refresh. And all right, yeah, that's what I wanted. And then I can also set a nice um, confirmation message along with some other things. So let's take a look at those confirmation messages, which are also really easy to set up from the user end. Um, so let's just go to settings. So we can look at the form settings. Um, some of these are pretty basic with regard to what it's titled, um, what I want my submit button to say. It doesn't have to say submit. We could have conditional logic about once I'm allowed to submit, maybe certain things have to be completed in order for that to show up. Um, we could limit the number of times somebody could fill it in. Um, it's a pretty powerful tool. So then looking at those confirmations, uh, this is what we saw here. If I wanted it to say something else, I would just click edit. And I can have multiple confirmations. So um, based on, um, you know, different types of situations. I can set up my notifications. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. And these can get pretty, these can get pretty, um, advanced so i it isn't just me notifying because these store in the back end as well but um this isn't just about me you know getting a notification when there's any form filled out i can configure it so that only certain responses go to certain people so if i think that only a certain department should get all the ones that are for cherry ice cream i could do that if a different department or person is responsible for um, all of the blueberry ones, I can do that. I can also set up notifications uh, for the person that um, was submitting the form to let them, you know, know, hey, you got it. So uh, submission confirmation, which is different than an admin notice. Um, so who do we want to send to? So what about select a field? We're going to send it to the email address. So whatever they put in the email address field. Um, and, you know, this is the Oprah uh, form email. And then if we don't know what it is, it'll give us some nice tips here. So generally we want the from to be from admin, but um, we could have it be from someone else. Um, who do we want them to reply to? So it could be from someone different than where the replies go. Um, and then what the subject is. So thanks for the form submission. And so this could be an email that then talks to them about um, next steps or, um, says, Hey, here's what you submitted. Um, 
So there's a lot of options here. So we can make some really powerful tools here uh, as far as controlling, using, uh, setting up forms, using forms to control workflows, as well as continuing um, that circle of communication with the public. Uh, so the next thing that we would want to do is check uh, results on submissions of form and that we can do here. So let's take a look at entries. Um, so for this form, we can see we've had two entries. Um, and we can go ahead and either view them. We can mark them as red if we want to um, track again our workflow and have try to have some accountability there. Um, we could print these uh, for customer service reasons. If somebody turns something in and then they call and say, hey, that's not right, we can edit their response. Uh, you can resend the admin notification. Um, you can even uh, select a certain number of them or all of them and export that to Excel. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do here. Uh, let's take a look at um, how you place this on the page. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the number here, uh, the form number. Um, this is form number two. And we're going to want to know that in certain situations. So let's now take a look at this. So um, in other videos, we'll talk about different types of content. Um, in this case, this is a resource page. Um, and we have more than just pages. We have uh, resources um, as a content type and um, services as a content type, department as a content type, and we do that um, because it's database driven, um, which is another training conversation for another time. But uh, for here, what you'll see is that when I have this marked as forms, which means that then I can search for forms, it enables um, this online form option here. And so then that's the number two. All I have to do is put in number two. And then what it does is for the resource content, um, it automatically places the tabs that we saw for um, information and fill out uh, for that. Uh, this is all that what, what goes in instruction. And this is the page builder. If I was on another page, so let's say I wasn't on this, let's say I was just on, um, let's say I, my form was just a poll and I just wanted public opinion about uh, a certain program and I wanted to put that right on the program page. Um, I could do that too. And so I could just do form. There it is. And in this case, um, I don't even need to know the number. I can just, let's say uh, the event form was some sort of um, something that I wanted to throw in on a specific page. I could just do that right there and it would show up. So um, I have a lot of options for incorporating these forms wherever it is that I need them. Uh, so that is uh, the basics of how you edit an existing form. Uh, how you set up some of the notifications and settings, how you look at uh, responses, um, how you can pop that form on pretty much whatever page you want. If I wanted to start from scratch, I would just go to forms and new form. Oh, form for fun. And then I'm going to see a real familiar view here. Um, and that's where I just start dragging this stuff in. And so then we'll just start again, like we did in the edit, put, grabbing the fields that we want, putting them where we want them, and playing with the settings until the form's doing what we want it to do. Uh, when we're done, we'll click update. And then we'll go to whatever page it is or content um, that we want that form to appear in. Um, and insert it where we want it to be.